Welcome back. All right, today we're going to be going into the matrix and finding out all that we can about matrices. This is a really old movie for some of you, I understand. Okay, it's a really old movie for all of you, but hopefully you understand what it is. It's a movie with that was big, big, big back in the day, but for our purpose, we're going to be talking about matrices, which is a great way to collect data and use data and multiply and add and all do all these things to data at once. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about some basics of matrices. First thing is, this is a matrix. We have some bars here, all right? These are columns. Columns go up and down. Columns go up and down. These are rows. Rows go left and right, all right? A matrix dimension is determined by its rows and columns, and we write it that way. So, for example, this has two columns and a... And it has three, or excuse me, two rows and three columns. So two rows by three columns. That's the dimensions of this matrix. And it's really important to understand the dimensions of matrices. All right, you'll find out in a second when I'm adding matrices, we have to have two matrices with the exact same dimensions. All right, so if I had a two by three matrix and a three by two matrix, those are not the same. And I couldn't add those together. All right. Matrix elements are each individual component, and it's referred to by location of row and column. So, for example, right here, this is an element, okay? That is the first row, first column. This is an element. Second row, second column. Second row, third column, all right? Everything has its own elements. So, this is a two-by-two two matrix, all right, and we could say that the number two here, the component here, is in the second row, first column. So it would be the second row, first column element. All right, so let's do some cool stuff with this stuff. All right, first of all, can we do matrix addition and subtraction? Yes, we can. So you already heard me say this. We have to have exactly the same matrix dimensions. This is a two by two. This is a two by two. We can add these together. And we could get negative 3. I'm going to add common components. So negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. 5 plus negative 5 is 0. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. That would give us our answer to adding that. If I change this, let's say I change this and I make it subtraction. It's exactly the same. I have to have the same dimensions. I just subtract common components. Negative 3 minus negative 4 is positive 1. Negative 3 minus negative 1 is negative 2. 5 minus negative 5 is 10. 5 minus 5 is 0. All right? And that's how that works. Ooh, that one's wrong. Come on, Sullivan. Same components. We were just talking about that, right? There we go. So I would actually do negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. All right. I knew it was too good to be true. So this would be A plus B if I was uh, adding. This would be A minus B. And often you'll see matrices referred to by ca uh, capital letters. So if this is matrix A, this is matrix B, we can add them together. All right. Now, side note. All right. Side note over here. Sorry about that. Addition with matrices is commutative. That means I could do A plus B, or I could switch it and do B plus A. So if I add negative 4 plus negative 3, if I had switched the places, it would, in fact, work. The associative property, it works as well. The identitive property, all right? If I have, the, uh, if I have a matrix... Made up of all zeros, components are all zeros, that would be the identity property. I could add those together and I would have A plus the zero matrix would equal A. So all of those things work. All right. Now let's talk about multiplication. Let's talk about the easy multiplication first. First, we have scalar multiplication. And what scalar multiplication is, is it just takes a scalar on the outside and it multiplies every component on the inside. So we're going to scale everything in here by a factor of 3. So I would get 6, 
negative 12, 9, and 24. That would be my scalar multiplication. Not too bad, right? Now, obviously, you could get a little tricky. Maybe I did A plus 2B, right? That would mean I would have to multiply it. I would add my A, negative 3, 4, 5, negative 2, plus scale my B matrix first, and then add them together. So order of operations pertains here. Scalar multiplication would come first, then I would add those together, all right? All right, we talked about how when we were adding, we had to have the exact same dimensions to add them. This time, now we're going to actually multiply. Multiplying is a little bit trickier, all right? When we have multiplication, for example, I'm multiplying A times B to get C, what has to be true is the dimensions here have to match. So the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix must match. So here we have a three by two, and here we have a two by three. Three rows, two columns, two columns, three rows. These match, that's great. And what happens is, now we know what our matrix result will be. It'll be a three by three. So let's take a look at this. I'm in fact gonna do it down here so I can do it a little bit easier. All right, it's kind of like you doing the dot, uh, the scalar multiplication or uh, ve vectors, dot product a little bit. So I am going to label this. This is my one, one component. I'm, that means I'm gonna multiply the first row by the first column to get this. So one times zero is zero, plus zero times negative four is zero, all right? This is the one, two. Now, as you get better at this, you won't label these. First row, second column, all right? First row, second column. So now I'm gonna do the first row times the second column. One, first component times first component is four. Second component times second component, zero, all right? And now I'm gonna do the third column, all right? So this is gonna be the first row times the third column. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 0 times 8 is 0. All right, let's do this. This is going to be the second row, first column. So now I'm moving this down. Second row, first column. We're going to do first component, negative 3 times 0 is 0. Second component, 3 times negative 12 is negative 12. Now we have to move that over. All right. Second row, second column. Here we go. Negative three times four is negative 12. Second component, three times six is 18. All right, now we're gonna do second row times third column. Here we go. Negative three times negative one is a positive three. Three times negative eight is negative 24. All right, now we're moving on to the last row. All right, so we have negative five times zero is zero. Eight times negative four is negative 32. Move it to the next column. Third row, second column. Negative five times four is negative 20. Eight times six is 48. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna move it to, whoa, excuse me. We're gonna move it to the third column. Negative five times negative one is five. Eight times negative eight is negative 64. So let's put that up here. Our resultant matrix would be zero and zero is zero. Zero minus 12 is negative 12. Zero minus 32 is negative 32. Then I have four, I have six, I have 28, I have negative one, I have negative 21, and I have negative 59. Now, I know this can be hard sometimes, but you really want to make sure you organize your matrices well. Give some break in here, all right? We don't have commas or anything to separate these, so you really want to make sure you have all of this set. All right, question. We did A times B 
If I flip them, if I did the commutative property, would it work? Well, B is a two by three matrix, and A is a three by two matrix. So this matches, so we can multiply them, but what would our result be? It would be a two by two matrix. Are we allowed to have a two by two matrix? Yes, we are. Is that gonna be the same as what we had up here? No, it's not. So the commutative property actually does not work, all right? So the community probably doesn't work. The associative property is gonna work, and the identity property will work as well. The identity property we'll, we'll talk more about as we go, but it only works when it's an N by N matrix, so a square matrix. And I has to be something called an identity matrix, which we'll talk more about as we go along. All right, let's multiply these. So here we go. Let's see, this is a two rows and four columns. Can we multiply? This has four rows and three columns, so our dimensions here match. So our result is gonna be a two by three. All right, so let's do this. Two by three. This is the first component, first row, first column. So first row right here and First column right here. So four times negative two is negative eight. And I move to the next one. Three times eight is 24. Move to the next one. One times negative nine is negative nine. Zero times zero is zero, okay? Let's try down here. So this is second row, third column. So let's do second row. Ooh, because I wanted to erase this third column all right so three times zero is zero negative four times three is negative twelve five times two is ten nine times four is thirty six all right so i've done two you need to find the others all right two one two two all the rest, all right? So pause the video and do that on your own. All right, hopefully you were able to do that one. I have shown my work here. My result was seven, 25, 11, negative 83, negative 28, and 34. Now, there's an easier way to do it, all right? We're gonna do it with our calculator, but here's the thing, you know, uh, you can't always use your calculator, all right? For most of these lessons, we're gonna be doing smaller matrices, like two by twos and two by ones and things like that. And the expectation is that you'll be able to do that without a calculator. So you need to know how to multiply matrices without a calculator. But I'm gonna show you how to do it with a calculator as well. So we go in here. The big thing here is this matrix button right here. All right, so I have to go second matrix. Now the first thing I have to do is edit. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna edit matrix A. Matrix A was a two by four. So I can put two, enter, four. All right, and then it's as easy as putting it in. 4, enter, 3, enter, 1, enter, 0, enter, ne and then uh, 3, negative 4, 5, and 9, okay? When you're done with that, you need to go back and put in matrix B. So I'm going to go second, matrix, again, edit, matrix B. This time I'm putting in a 4, by three. So now we have negative two, four, zero, eight, four, three. It's really easy to lose your place and put in the wrong number. So calculators sometimes not always the best either, but it does make our life after we enter these much easier. All right, so now we have them. Once you have them both in there, quick tip, you have to quit, okay? Then you have to go back in. So I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna multiply matrix A, second matrix A times second matrix B. And we will see, did I make a mistake over here? I bet I did. Seven, 25, 11, negative 83, negative 20, 34, I didn't. Hey, way to go. All right, so that is that easy, all right? Now, let's see what happens if I do B times A. 
So second matrix, I'm going to do B times second matrix A. Let's see what happens. Dimension mismatch. Because this was a 4 by 3 and this was a 2 by 4 they would not match dimensions, right? That's why it won't work. All right, so best of luck on these. These are a little bit tedious. I understand that. I'm sorry about that. But again, you really need to know the basics of how to do these because we're going to be using these a lot the rest of the way. All right, Till next time, peace. I'm out of here.